Okay, so now we're going to run through baby care. So I'm going to talk you through how to bath your baby, how to change their little nappies, um, how to look after their skin and their cord, dressing them and putting them down to sleep safely. So when we're thinking about a baby bath, okay, so how often do we give them a bath? So once a week is absolutely perfect. Any more than that might risk drying out their skin. Um, what's the correct water temperature? Um, 37 degrees, that's the temperature they're used to. Um, that's your body's temperature, so it's nice and familiar for them. Um, plain water for the first six weeks. This is again just going to get their skin off to a really good start. And um, what do we need? So a baby bath, just something very plain, very simple. If you don't have a baby bath, a nice clean sink um, would be suffice. Um, two towels, a clean nappy for afterwards, um, maybe some cotton wool pads or cotton wool balls or a sponge and a fresh outfit for afterwards as well. Um, so how do we bath baby? Okay, so we bath them in sections. So we do their face first, then their hair, then their body. When we're bathing their face and their hair, we don't want them getting cold, so we cover them with a towel. Um, I'm leaving a nappy on this little guy because the chances are once he starts hearing the water trickle, um, it's quite likely that he's just going to do a pee, okay? So I've covered him up nice and cosy. I'm going to take a, a gentle support to the back of his neck. So I've got my thumb and forefinger just supporting the nape of his neck. I'm going to lift him up and I'm supporting his hips between my elbow and my hip. And I'm going to bring him over to the bath. Um, I've got plain water in my bath here and I have, oops, sorry. I have plain water in my bath and it's probably about 10 centimetres deep and I'm going to use my fresh clean hands that I've just washed and I'm going to start with his eyes, okay? So a little cotton wool pad into the water, give it a little bit of a, a squeeze and I'm going to clean that eye from the inside out, so like this, okay? I'm going to discard this piece of cotton wool to prevent bringing any potential infection from one eye to the other. I'm going to give this another um, dampen in the water and I'm going to clean the other eye again the same way starting in the inside working out and I'm going to discard this piece of cotton wool. With a fresh piece of cotton wool I'm going to give his face a little clean so his forehead down the bridge of his nose his cheeks his other cheek under his little chin I'm going to get his neck as well so just let like maybe just tilt his head back and that will help him stretch out all those creases in his neck and I'll do behind his ears too and um, the reasoning behind the ear the reasoning for cleaning behind the ears and the creases in his neck is that there are two hot spots for him dribbling milk and that milk just sitting so we don't want any crusty milk in any of those crevices so we just clean them regularly now we're going to do his hair so to clean his hair as I said no product just plain water for the first six weeks so we're just going to scoop up a little bit of water and we're going to dampen his hair. So it's just a freshen up, that's all he needs. When he's a little bit older, when he's six weeks plus, if you wanted, you could use a little bit of baby shampoo in his hair. And to do that, you're just popping a pea size amount to his head, you're lathering that up, and then you're going to rinse it off. Okay, so no baby shampoo for the first six weeks, but once he's six weeks or more, feel free to, to use a little bit in his hair. Okay, so that's his face clean, it's his hair clean, and that's real time, okay? So it's quite quick bathing your baby. We're gonna bring that towel, flip that corner of the towel around, and we're gonna dry his hair. Now I need to bath his body, okay? So I'll just take the nappy off. We'll give him a little bit of a freshen up just before we pop him in rid of this nappy and I'm just going to safely lift him. So the easiest way to lift your baby for the bath is just to gently allow the nape of his neck to rest on the inside of my wrist and I'm going to take a firm but gentle grip of the arm that's further away and then I'm just going to catch both feet, okay, so bottom of the legs or feet and I'm going to carry them symmetrically. And then I just bring him over, okay, so he feels nice and safe and secure. Babies hate surprises, so I'm not going to just dunk him in the water real fast. That might make him cry. So I'm just going to slowly lower him down into the water, like this. And once he's in and he's, his bum and his feet, his legs are resting on the bottom of the cot, or of the 
um, bath. Now I have a free hand to give him a little wash down. Okay, so I'm just going to freshen him up. I'm going to give him between his toes a little clean, the same on the other foot, in between the creases of his thighs, his genitalia, any little creases under his arms, his little hands, clean in between his fingers, and the same on the other hand. I can use my sponge, I can use my hand, whatever I like to clean him. Then I'm going to lean him forward, okay, and I'm just going to help um, lift, I'm going to just lift him there, so he's, I've got the same grip on the arm with my opposite hand on the arm that's further away and his chest now is resting on the inside of my wrist so I'm just going to use my hand or my sponge cleaning down his back and his bum and that's his bath done so we're just going to bring him back over we'll just let him drip dry a little bit here and then we'll bring him over pop him down on our baby towel and we're just going to dry him off all right so we give him a good dry making sure that we get all the little creases or crevices. We're going to roll them onto his side and give us back a little bit of a clean as well. A little dry and the same on the other side. Okay, so that is your baby bathed. So once a week, give him a little bath like that. Um, and then every day, if you wanted to give his face a little clean, in behind the ears, the neck and the little hands. Um, top tips for bathing a baby. Um, always when you're filling the bath okay cold water first then hot okay and the reasoning behind that is some of the plastics in the bath could absorb very very hot heat you know so if, if hot water were to go in first they might absorb the heat you put in cool water after your water feels nice and warm but the floor of your bath is very hot okay so always be mindful of that cold water first and then warm it up to the temperature you're hoping to achieve with the adding the, the hotter warm water then. Um, always bath your baby at hip height, okay? So that means setting up a little area in your kitchen on your work surfaces or on your kitchen table. Um, that's probably the best thing to do because you need to mind our backs after we have babies. They're depending on us to carry them around and we'll be no good to them if we hurt ourselves by stretching or leaning or taking a bit of a shortcut. So, um, always bath baby at hip height and um, no harm to have a second set of hands with you the first few times you bath a baby and um, so it's only once a week coordinate with your partner when might suit both of you to bath the baby together um, and before you get started just ensure you have everything you need okay and um, skin care okay so we've bathed our baby or maybe we've just given him a bit of a freshen up for that day face hands and so on what we need to do every 24 hours is just give him a little head to toe glance. So we're just looking at his, his skin head to toe and the same on his back, okay? And this always just keeps us up to speed on like how baby is physically, okay? So what we could be looking out there when we're doing this little skin check every day, we might notice a bit of dry skin, we might see a little bit of newborn rash, we might notice melia, which are like little milk spots on the bridge of the baby's nose. Um, but it just means that, well, if we do notice anything, well, we're keeping an eye on it regularly. Or if we didn't notice any, like we'd be quick to notice something as well if something were to crop up. So if we were to see some dry skin um, on your baby, well, why might that happen? Usually the most common reason is an overdue baby. So if we see a baby with dry skin in the first couple of days or the first week generally that will go hand in hand with a baby who's overdue and the reason for that is because babies are covered in a layer of vernix when they're in your tummy it's like a little waterproof layer of thick moisturizer um, and they absorb that over the weeks um, but sometimes towards the end of the pregnancy the vernix has just worn away or been absorbed so they're swimming around in amniotic fluid with no waterproof layer which can lead to a bit of dryness we don't worry too much about it we just use a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of organic coconut oil and just give them a little massage to the dry area and just to perform that daily and you'll notice within about three to five days that dryness will have cleared up um, a newborn rash, okay, so a newborn rash, you'll probably see in the slide, 
is kind of a blotchy rash that can be quite common on newborn babies. Um, we don't know exactly why it happens, possibly due to the, all the new environmental factors that they're being exposed to. Um, but what we do know about newborn rashes, it's completely harmless. It's completely normal. It's very common and it tends to clear up after about two weeks if we just leave it alone. Okay, so don't put anything on it. If you notice it on the ward, maybe just mention it to your midwife and your paediatrician will be reviewing your baby before you go home anyway. So they'll be able to review that newborn rash for you before you go home too. At home in the community, you're gonna have your GP, your public health nurse calling as well. So if there's any worries or concerns, any of those health professionals could review the newborn rash. Um, and you know, if, if concerned, you can always ring the maternity hospital and describe to them over the phone. And you know, if we feel baby needs to be reviewed, we will, of course, invite you back in. But as I said, it's completely normal. Um, melia or milk spots, little white spots over the bridge of baby's nose, um, completely normal. They will just be reabsorbed back into the skin. Might take six or eight months, but we just do nothing with them. We just let them run their course. Cord care, okay? So you'll probably notice um, with your first, or when you're doing your skin to skin, so you'll see the little umbilical cord which um, had been clamped and cut after delivery. Um, day one, it looks quite like that picture on the extreme left there. It's kind of white, feels quite clammy and cool to touch. It's soft to the touch as well. Um, and what will happen with that cord is it'll just dry up over the next few days. By day three or day five, it'll appear much drier and much thinner because that, that moisture is evaporating and usually around the week mark, that cord will actually fall off. Um, what do we do with the cord? Absolutely nothing, okay? So we just let the air at it. So when I say let the air at it, I just mean fold the front of your nappy down, okay? So that it's not covering the cord. Um, we don't clean it with anything. We just leave it, not covering it with the nappy, and we, we just let it run its course. It should fall off after about a week. Um, top tips for cord care. So folding down the nappy to let the air at the cord. Obviously no need to clean it. Will fall off in a week. Remember there are no nerves in your baby's cord. Um, so this, does, this process doesn't hurt them or bother them at all. Um, and if concerned, link in with your GP, your public health nurse or your maternity hospital. Okay, so to change a nappy, all right. Um, so first we'll just have a little look at nappies, okay? So obviously they look something like this. And um, we have a picture on the front to let us know which side is the front. Um, most nappies these days actually have a little yellow strip down the front of them as well. Um, and the, what the function of this little yellow strip is that it will turn green or blue um, when it's wet. Okay, so this is not to say, oh quick, change me, you know, I'm a little bit wet. Um, the logic is more so with the feeding. So when you're feeding your baby, um, I suppose just to guide you in that, is baby getting enough um, milk? We like to see one wet nappy on day one, two on day two, three on day three, four on day four, five on day five. And we get to about day six or day seven, we expect to see about, um, six or eight wet nappies every day and um, the reason that we depend on this little strip to help us find the wet nappies is because sometimes they can be um, hidden in lots of meconium or baby poo like this so the um, wet nappy so baby urine and um, that will be absorbed by the nappy and and turn this kind of little color to guide you whereas the the dirty nappies they tend to just sit on the the top layer of the nappy not be absorbed by anything and not affect the colour of the strip. Okay, so the strip is going to guide you more so that baby's having enough wet nappies so that you're confident that the feeding is going well. Okay, when we open our nappies, um, there's a little, you'll see there on either side, little guards and they pop up when you open the nappy and their job is to keep the contents of the nappy in the nappy okay so if they haven't bounced up themselves just for you just to manually just lift them up okay and um, obviously with the tabs and um, try and keep them as um, symmetrical as possible um, and it's just because nappies that are um, 
that are on nice and straight and properly. Number one, they're gonna be more comfy for your baby. So your baby's probably gonna sleep a little bit better. Um, and number two, they're gonna work better, you know, so they're less likely to leak and things like that. Okay. Um, I need to put this nappy on my baby. Okay, so let me just lift him up and I'll get rid of this towel for a second. Okay, pop it back down again. Okay. Um, so we need to be really careful of baby's hips, baby's spine, baby's necks when we're putting on nappies. Um, I suppose it's just a little movement, but when we're giving baby, you know, eight to ten nappy changes in a day, 365 days a year for the best part of three years, you can see how, like, you know, being careful with every nappy change is really important. So just lift up his bum, no more than an inch off your changing table, pop the nappy in under his bum, and um, we can just bring this up carefully, okay? When we're closing up the nappy, as I said, if the cord is there, like I showed you earlier, just fold down the front of the nappy um, and close it up. Um, little boys, the last thing you wanna do is make sure that their penis is pointing down into the nappy, um, and that's just, you know, to prevent any, you know, there's little or no moisture up here, so if, um, you know, if he does pee up, he's just gonna end up with a wet vest. So that's the last thing you're to check with little boys. With little girls, when you're cleaning them, okay, so when you're cleaning their, their bums, whoops, sorry. You just wanna make sure that you're cleaning little girls from the front to the back, okay? And the logic there is that they have their anus, they have their vagina, and they have their urethra. So what you don't want to do is bring baby poo past the other two orifices and risk introducing little infections like UTIs and things like that. So girls, you're always cleaning them from the front to the back. You want to make sure that the nappy isn't too tight or too loose. Whoops, sorry. Um, so you do that exactly the same way as we were checking the car seat earlier. Pop two fingers just between the nappy and baby's skin. If it fits snugly, your nappy isn't too tight or too loose. Okay, so that is a nappy change. Um, wet nappies, I would change them when baby's awake, having a feed anyway. Dirty nappies, I would wake them as soon as you know about them. Okay, and it's just because the, um, obviously the nappies are really absorbent. So wet nappies don't tend to, to cause a problem for baby's skin, but dirty nappies, you can see in the picture, they just sit on the surface of the nappy, they'll aggravate the skin, okay? When you're cleaning babies, probably the best thing you could use um, for cleaning them is warm water and cotton wool. Um, and I suppose for three reasons, that's a good idea. Um, the most important reason um, is that it's the kindest thing for your baby. So, you know, babies usually wake up, they kind of stir, they start showing you some feeding cues. And typically the first thing you're gonna do is give them a, a new nappy before you feed them and then put them back down to bed. Um, so that, yeah, they are kind of just up. And if you go putting a freezing cold wipe on their bum, they're probably just gonna cry, okay? So if you have nice warm water and a little bit of cotton wool, that's gonna be much kinder for them. They become a happier baby as a result. Um, number two, Obviously, there's no harsh chemicals in warm water and cotton wool. So for their skin, it's kinder as well. Um, and it's the cheapest thing you can use. So, you know, a little packet of, um, you know, cotton wool pads or cotton wool balls will be much less expensive than, you know, a packet of wipes. Um, so that's cleaning them. And that's nappies. Okay. So now we're going to dress baby. Okay, so how many layers do we put on our baby? We put one layer more than you. Okay, so that rule usually uh, works well for like every day of every year. If you're wearing a t-shirt, your baby's in a vest and a baby robe. If you're in a t-shirt and a jumper, your baby's in a vest, a baby robe and a cardigan. So he's always in one layer more than you. If you pop to visit someone and their house is dark warm and you take off your jumper, well, you're going to take a layer off your baby as well until the temperature has settled a bit when you're gonna put your jumper back on and you're gonna put your cardigan back on baby. So I think I've painted the picture that like, baby is always mirroring you just in one layer more, okay? What do we dress them in? I would say for as long as possible. So certainly the first two or three months, you'd want to be dressing baby in a little vest that looks something like this and a little baby grow. They're also called body suits or sleep suits. 
that looks something like this, okay? So that is your baby's, and a little cardigan if he's having a third layer. Um, why do we dress them in vests and baby girls? Probably because they're comfier. Like, would you be comfier in your tights and your dress going to sleep, or would you be comfier in your onesie? Probably your onesie, you know? And they need a certain amount of sleep. They need 18 to 20 hours sleep, you know, in 24 hours, especially when they're small. So we want to do everything we can to help them get this. Um, when we're dressing them, so how often do we dress a baby? Um, I'd say if you gave him a new vest and a new baby grow every 24 hours, um, obviously if he soils his baby grow or vest in the meantime, give him a new one. Um, how do we dress them? Okay, so they hate getting their little heads covered. So just scrunch your vest down as tight as you can and just rest it on his, um, on his forehead, lift his head up and just scooch the back of the vest around the nape of his neck. And then you're just going to carefully bring the vest over his head. To bring his arms through, you're just going to take a gentle grip on his hand, so not his fingers, his hand, and bring his hand through, and you'll do the same on the other side. And um, when you're buying vests, it doesn't really matter if they're long sleeve. Once his core is warm, that's the most important thing. Roll him on his side just to straighten out the back of that baby grown or baby vest and just straighten it up. So that's putting on a baby vest. Um, taking off a baby vest. So if he, if his vest is clean and you're just taking it off because you're giving him a fresh change of clothes, um, you can take it back off over his head the way I just showed you. Um, so taking it back off the way you put it on. If he soiled the vest, say he's peed up the front by accident or he's pooed a little bit up the back, you don't want to bring that over his face because you could risk introducing a little eye infection or something like that. So the vests are actually designed to come around and over their shoulders. So I'll show you now. So we just bring one little arm through the neckline of the vest, so they're very stretchy. And the same on the other side. There we go, and that's his little vest. So we can just shimmy it down over his hips and take it off, okay? Now we need to put on his baby grow, okay? And we need to pop on his um, baby grow. So the easiest way to pop that on is just we'll put, do one half and then the other. So we'll pop one arm through. Whoops. Perfect. And then we pop the leg in. Okay. And then what we do is we just roll baby on his side and we just scooch all the rest of the baby grow in under him. And then we roll him back and all of this side of the baby grow is just ready to be tucked back out. So again, we just pop his little arm in and the same with the little leg and we just do his little poppers. When you're closing his poppers, always start, you know, start at an end, you know, so start at the top, work your way down um, and then start at the little legs and work your way up, okay? And you should leave yourself just one or two little poppers in the middle for you to figure out, which is a lot easier than, you know, when you've got three or four, they can get mixed up. Um, some of the baby grows actually have colour-coded poppers now. So if they're not hugely more expensive to, you know, than the baby grows beside them, I'd probably pick up the colour-coded ones just out of, out of easiness or simplicity. Now we need to put our little baby to bed. Okay, so when we're putting baby to sleep, there are a couple of things that we need to remember. Okay, so the main points are, I'll go through the key points now, but the very simple way to remember how to put baby to sleep safely is remember the ABCs of safe sleep. Okay, so what does that mean? So A is meaning alone. Okay, so when we're putting baby down to sleep, we want that crib to be bare. We don't want any bumpers, pillows, teddies, snuggly little blankets, you know, so it is just a plain cot with a firm mattress and a fitted sheet, okay? And then we're going to carefully pop baby down and B stands for on his back, okay? So A, alone, B, on his back. So why do we put babies on their back going asleep? Well, in 1991, the Back to Sleep campaign was introduced. And when they started putting babies on their backs to sleep with the launch of this campaign, the instance of sudden infant death syndrome dropped by 82%, okay? So the evidence showed us that the safest way for baby to go asleep was on his back. 
um, and then C in a crib okay so in his cot or his crib or his Moses basket you know whatever safe um, firm mattress with a safe uh, area with nice sides a, a sleeping device for baby that's where he's to be sleeping okay and then when we're covering baby over, okay, we want to keep them warm using some cellular blankets. So cellular blankets look something like these. They are blankets with little holes in them and they are breathable. So they're going to make sure that your baby doesn't overheat. So two to four layers of cellular blankets would be perfect. And you'll actually just get to know your baby over the next couple of weeks and your baby will guide you as to whether he's, you know, two or four layers. You might find different times of the day in your house you know during the day he might only ever need two layers but maybe when you wake up and you're doing that nighttime feed and it's three in the morning and you're putting him down and the house feels a bit cooler well now you're giving him four layers you know so just kind of play it by ear and see how things go over the the first week or so till you really get to know your baby and um, the main points to remember are once you're sticking inside the following parameters everything is above board, you're doing a good job. So we say, um, obviously the ABCs of safe sleep, correct room temper, temperature 16 to 20 degrees, baby's in one layer more than you, and you're using two to four layers of cellular blankets. So if you kind of stick within those parameters, you're, 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 everything you're doing is completely correct, okay? Um, what does our safe sleep booklet tell us okay so this is available online or your midwife may give it to you when you're leaving the ward it's a 12 page document if you were to google safe sleep pdf it'll be the very first thing that pops up on google so your homework is to have a little read of that if that's okay and what are the key points okay so what is it telling us it's saying always place your baby on their back when they're going asleep so we know that and we know why don't smoke during pregnancy. And if you'd like to give up smoking during pregnancy, you could link in with Liz, our smoking cessation midwife, and you would find her through the outpatients department. Um, obviously don't smoke or allow anyone to smoke in the home or in the car with your new baby. The safest place for your baby to sleep at night is in a cot in your room. And we say for the first six months, baby should be in your room with you. Um, make sure that, or sorry, place baby with their feet to the foot of the cot. Okay, so why is that important? Well, we know not only are we doing a really safe thing by putting him on his back, but we're actually doing one step further by putting his feet to the foot of the cot because that means that he actually can't even snuggle down under the blankets because there's a little, um, a little, something, a little barrier there. You know, so feet to the foot is very important as well. Um, make sure baby's head stays uncovered when asleep. So we're doing that by covering the chest with the cellular blanket, but always making sure his little arms are out and over the blanket. That will stop him being able to bring that blanket up and over his head. Um, don't let your baby get too hot, okay? So watch his temperature. If he's very grizzly and he's not, go not settling down to sleep like he usually does, sometimes that could be him just telling you he's a bit too hot or a bit too cold. So the easiest way to check his temperature is just to get the back of your hand, pop it down, feel your own chest, and the same with your baby, and feel his core. If you're much the same, he's perfect. If, he's, if you're much the same and you're feeling well, you know, um, he's perfect. If he's feeling a bit warmer than you, well, obviously just take off for a layer or two. If he's feeling a bit cooler than you, maybe he'd actually like an extra layer or two. So kind of use your own judgment on it. And keep the cot free from soft objects or anything loose or fluffy. So that goes back to that A alone, okay? Um, don't fall asleep um, in bed with your baby. If you or your partner smoke, have taken alcohol, drugs, or medication that makes you sleep more heavily. Don't fall asleep in bed with your baby if they are less than three months old, were born prematurely, or had a low birth weight. So low birth weight being anything under 2.5 kilos. Breastfeed your baby if possible. Never fall asleep with baby on a sofa or an armchair. Um, and if your baby seems unwell, get medical advice early and quickly. And I'm gonna talk about that in the next video.